We've got a whole lot of news to dump on you today, and we know one guy in particular that is super hungry for our coverage. But we've also got so much more on today's episode, like the fact that Aaron Rodgers is, in fact, a bad person. South by Southwest is currently in shambles. The Princess of Wales is still missing, and new conspiracies continue to pop up. One of the worst streamers in the world was arrested after another of the worst streamers in the world accidentally spoiled his escape plan. The biggest adult film website just shut down in one of the country's largest states. And horniest states. And if you thought China having a stake in TikTok was bad, wait till you get a load of who's in the running to take it over here. Have we killed enough time to start talking about Alex Jones and analingus yet? No? Okay, hold on, wait for it. Uh, a couple more seconds here. All right, Elliot, go ahead. Why don't you take it from here? I guess that'll be me. Alex Jones wants to eat my ass. And Ricky's ass. Uh -huh. And your ass, too. Mm. Apparently, conspiracy theorist and InfoWars host Alex Jones thought he was acting very tough and cool when he decided to put out a quote that was instantaneously and understandably misinterpreted by everyone online. What's so bizarre about this is that it wasn't someone taking a quote of his out of context and photoshopping it onto what's supposed to be an inspiring looking graphic. Alex Jones himself posted the following graphic to his official verified twitter.com account. I will eat your leftist ass. Okay, sir. Wasn't long at all before people started pointing out the uh, absurdity of this quote, and, and Jones was quick to reply to a few confused people by claiming that it was an intentional double entendre. Which, if that were true, it still means he wants to eat your ass. He just wants to do more than that as well. I hate you so much. I'm going to stick my tongue right up that sphincter. Give me that oh, thing. Blah, blah, blah. Now, it also falls under the same category as NFT Nick's recent antics. Ha ha, joke's on you. I was only pretending to be stupid. Yeah, I feel real real silly and dumb. Yeah. Falling for, for that. Yeah, well, after getting publicly humiliated for an entire day, Jones stopped trying to act like he was in on the joke and made things even worse for himself by attempting to explain his stance on eating leftist ass, which... If you have to go into a detailed explanation on your ass-eating joke, you've already lost. Come on. Still, it is impressive that he was able to somehow make matters even worse by indicating that he clearly wasn't talking about analingus. He was actually talking about legitimate cannibalism. So yeah, that's much better, right? Okay. Thank you, Alex. Here's his post in full. The left has misunderstood what my intention was in posting this meme. I am talking about the road warrior collapse that has already begun because of the policies of the Great Reset. I'm talking about cannibalism, as defined as the consumption of another human's flesh. Ten days without food, and over 80% of people start eating each other. You guys want to bring down civilization, so I just wanted to warn you. Good luck. Okay. I will eat your ass! Weird that he would start there, but uh, sure. The frogs are making me want to eat your ass! <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, with that explanation, yeah. You seem totally normal, sir. Thanks for clarifying. Mm -hmm. The original tweet did provide some incredible commentary, though, and uh, these two quote tweets dunking on Jones were probably the funniest. And keeping in mind, this is above the image of him saying, I will eat your leftist ass. When I see a baddie at the Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh no, he drank the frog water. Which is the perfect explanation. Yeah, yeah he OD'd on frog water. Yep. But speaking of Alex Jones, though, someone whose views seem to align with his more and more in recent years is, of course, NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers. And with the announcement that he was in the running to potentially become RFK Jr.'s pick for vice president, someone decided to let everyone know that, uh, at least at one point, Aaron Rodgers had apparently parroted the Sandy Hook conspiracy theories about crisis actors that Alex Jones made famous and which ultimately ruined him financially. And first off, yes, it is very weird that RFK Jr. is still in the presidential race. We don't really understand why, considering that if he was going to be a spoiler candidate for anyone, it would probably actually hurt Trump the most. Because yeah. his brand of crazy leans into that Trump brand of crazy, even though theoretically there's weird political divides there. It's just a certain brand of crazy. Yeah. But apparently, yeah, he's still going for it and announced a few options for his VP pick this week, which also included Jesse the Body Ventura. No, Jesse's too good for this. Yeah, and also, uh, apparently, Andrew Yang. So, all over the place. 
with Rogers actually getting close to politics and not just appearing as a total crank on random sports podcasts, reporters thought it was time to let everyone know that, yeah, he'd, he'd dabbled in Sandy Hook conspiracies in the past. I'm shocked. I can't believe Aaron Rodgers, the Aaron Rodgers, would have a stupid, <laughs> misinformed opinion about something. Mm -hmm. Wow. And yeah, obviously this wouldn't be the first time that Rodgers had espoused right-wing conspiracies. And this is coming from a reputable source, so take that however you want. But here's the reporting from CNN, which includes the first-hand experience from journalist Pamela Brown, who is putting her professional career on the line to share this. I mean, I don't know. You would hope she would be telling the truth. This is 100% true. Yeah. I don't need even further verification. <laughs> I don't need to fact check this. Aaron Rodgers definitely believed that shit. Yeah. Just look at the guy. Look at anything he said in the last, like, five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This man definitely thought Sandy Hook was an inside job. Yeah. So here's the article. Brown was covering the Kentucky Derby for CNN in 2013 when she was introduced to Rogers, then with the Green Bay Packers at a post-Derby party. Hearing that she was a journalist with CNN, Rogers immediately began attacking the news media for covering up important stories. Rogers brought up the tragic killing of 20 children and six adults by a gunman at Sandy Hook Elementary School, claiming it was actually a government inside job and the media was intentionally ignoring it. When Brown questioned him on the evidence to show this very real shooting was staged, Rogers began sharing various theories that have been disproven numerous times. Such conspiracy theories were also later at the center of lawsuits brought by victims' families when they sued conspiracy theorist Alex Jones on the matter. In response to these claims, and armed with the knowledge that Alex Jones is now financially ruined for spreading these lies and causing unthinkable torture to the families of the victims, Rogers did put out a statement on Twitter claiming that he had, no, I didn't do this. Uh, clearly, this is a lie. Aaron, you totally did. Come on, buddy. He said, As I'm on the record saying in the past, what happened in Sandy Hook was an absolute tragedy. I am not and have never been of the opinion that the events did not take place. Again, I hope that we learn from this and other tragedies to identify the signs that will allow us to prevent unnecessary loss of life. My thoughts and prayers continue to remain with the families affected along with the entire Sandy Hook community. Again, he, as people have pointed out, like he doesn't explicitly say it wasn't an inside job or yeah. whatever in that statement. Yeah. And also, a bunch he of just other... doesn't think it was crisis actors, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't uh, yeah. some other. Cons... <laughs> uh, it's a very weird way to issue the statement, and people have pointed out they've. I don't trust these, these, uh, you know, AI analyzing things. But people put this through an AI analyzer and was like, yeah, this was created by ChatGPT. This this mm. statement. Neither here nor there, but uh, it's just odd. Now, it's not that his clarification matters at this point anyway, because according to Mediaite, donors are on the verge of pulling the plug on RFK Jr.'s campaign anyway. And that's because, apparently, of his VP shortlist. Wait, they were really just going to keep pumping money into this uh, garbage bin, if not for this news? I think, I think they were under the impression that this would hurt Joe Biden and not Donald Trump. But uh, now, they're, now they're pulling yeah. out. Here's uh, the reporting from Mediaite. In fact, a number of donors have voiced their discontent directly with the campaign, pledging to withdraw their support from Kennedy if he chooses Rogers in particular. One source explained that donors think it's telling that no credible person wants to be <laughs> VP and that the donors see his selection as an acknowledgement of the credibility of his campaign or lack thereof. The source added that Rogers has no political experience and Ventura has not been in politics for nearly 30 years. Hey, catching strays over here. Yeah. My boy Jesse, what the fuck? Both of them are unqualified for the second highest position in the United States. Disagree. <laughs> on the Ventura yeah. vice president. Choosing either of them, wrong, would mean that Bobby is not a serious candidate. Again, I disavow 50% of this <laughs> statement. Yeah. Because Jesse Ventura... He's said some wacky things over he's, the years. He's had some conspiracy theories of his own, but he, at least yeah. his are more in line with stuff that could and sometimes has actually happened. He was the governor of a state. Yeah. And ran third party and won. Mm -hmm. And seems to have done a pretty okay job at mm -hmm. it. But now he lives down in the Baja. Yeah. Or I don't know if he, maybe he's not in Baja anymore. But, uh... Interesting guy. Yeah, well, I mean, we could have told Way him, better than Aaron Rodgers. Come we, on. We could have told uh, all these donors that uh, this, this wasn't a serious campaign from the get-go. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, we could have told them that. We didn't even know he was still seriously considering <laughs> this bid for president, considering how poorly received he's been overall. Uh, it seems like his shit plateaued a year ago yeah. with uh, going down to Muscle Beach and taking off his shirt and doing a couple push-ups in his jeans. 
Like, even after that, in, like, January, everyone's like, is this still happening? Yeah. Why are you still out there saying things? The primaries for both major parties are done. Yeah, it's done. Like... It's literally Jover. It's, it's Jover. Oh, well, speaking of insufferable assholes, though, the funniest possible thing has happened to the worst possible people because controversial kick streamer Aiden Ross apparently foiled an escape plan by Andrew Tate and his brother because Ross couldn't stop that yapping on his live stream. Aiden Ross, I, listen, I haven't delved too deep into this guy, but from what I've seen, he seems like he might be the dumbest person alive. <laughs> he yeah. seems just incredibly stupid. Yeah, well, uh, the revelation of Tate's plans to escape Romania uh, then led to his arrest by Romanian authorities on Monday of this week, all because, all because of that. Yeah. Too much yapping. Mayor of Yap City. Sometimes it'd be Aiden Ross. <laughs> so during the stream, Aiden Ross read what appeared to be a direct message from Andrew Tate, which signaled his intentions to flee the country, saying, I'm going to be leaving Romania soon and probably never coming back. <laughs> Here, here's a quick clip of, of what happened. Andrew had hit me up. He said, hey, I'm going to be uh, leaving Romania soon and probably never coming back. If you want to come over and do a week of long streams and content before I leave, I think it'll be big. And it's never. It's. I'm sorry. He said it's not. It's basically now or never. Wow. So shortly he admitted, after, yeah, quite literally. Shortly after the stream, Andrew Tate was detained in Romania. And the statement put out by the lawyers representing the victims in his trafficking and assault case indicates that the stream was almost certainly the reason why he was arrested. Last week, we received information that Tate might have been planning to flee Romania, where he is due to stand trial for separate allegations of rape and human trafficking. We wrote to the British police to bring this to their attention and to urge them to immediately seek a warrant for Tate's detention in Romania and extradition to the UK. And here's the Washington Post with more details on all this. Andrew Tate, the self-described misogynist influencer, will be extradited to Britain after all legal proceedings in Romania have concluded, a Romanian court ruled Tuesday. The Tate brothers were detained Monday evening in Romania after a British police force secured a European arrest warrant. And so, yeah, it appears as though the extradition was delayed until the Romanian court stuff. And the lawyer representing the Tate brothers said the following about the new development and also mentions the fact that Aidan Ross caused all of this, saying... We appreciate the Bucharest Court of Appeals decision to postpone the extradition of Andrew and Tristan Tate. This ruling provides an opportunity for the brothers to participate fully in their defense and for the legal process to proceed in a transparent matter, the statement said. The lawyer also said that they unequivocally deny any accusations that Andrew or Tristan Tate intends to abscond from Romania to evade the judicial proceedings. We believe this rumor has originated from a popular online influencer <laughs> who misconstrued a text message from our clients while streaming live. There is simply no truth to it. Aiden Ross, a popular American live streamer, inadvertently publicized the Tate's alleged plans to leave Romania, according to Jennifer Sales, an attorney at McHugh. Yeah, hey, hey, just got this new text. Hey, everybody in here loves uh, Andrew Tate, right? Just got this new hot text from Andrew Tate. Weird. It says, I thought he wasn't allowed to leave Romania, but it sounds... That's wild, though. Look at that. Yeah, sounds like he's trying to leave, and, and for some reason, he's not planning on going back. Probably should have read you this. You guys are going to love this. I'm going to read this live without reading it beforehand and just let everyone know, live on air, what the intentions here are. Yeah. Anyway, we got more news coming up for you in just a second, including the multiple ways that the state of Texas has made a fool of itself in just the past few days. But first... Let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsors for supporting the show, starting with Mint Mobile. Mm -hmm. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when you hear that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, you think, hey, what's the catch? But after using the service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. I popped in the SIM card on a trip to New York and literally couldn't tell the difference between my providers. I had fast, consistent service everywhere I went, and especially when it counted, during a torrential downpour. Uh, Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans for just 15 bucks a month. Say bye bye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. 
Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's limited time deal and get premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash news dump. That is mintmobile.com slash news dump. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash news dump. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. This episode is also sponsored by Factor. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goal. They have so many options, yet I desire that shredded chicken taco bowl every it's single time. It's a great time. one. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash newsdump50 and use code newsdump50 to get 50% off. That is code newsdump50 at factormeals.com slash newsdump50 to get 50% off. All right, back to the news, because right now, over in... Austin, Texas, the annual the stars at night. The annual South by Southwest festival is taking place, and that you know, of course, brings together the worlds of tech, music, and filmmaking in a way that worked pretty great for many years, <laughs> until two of those industries that we just mentioned started becoming very threatened by the third one. Mm -hmm. In previous years, it was essentially, it was a film festival, a music festival, and tech conference, all slightly overlapping over the course of around two weeks. It was a showcase for bands, a place to premiere exciting new movies, and during the mid-2000 tech boom, it was a place for uh, websites and app developers to show off the hottest new innovations in tech. Uh, basically, a bunch of startups would sponsor activations where people could learn about new apps, new features, or meet Grumpy Cat <laughs> before heading out to a local venue to see Metallica headline after a bunch of indie bands tried to make their mark. Yeah. So it, a real interesting, uh, a real melting pot of like lanyard polo shirt guys and mm -hmm. rock guys. But back then it was like, guys. it was like, yeah, oh, you can call a car on your phone now. Yeah. It's a new app. We're disrupting the industries. And like all of these, they turned out to be pretty bad, but there was like this this just surge of apps. And then on the other side, it was uh, the blogosphere. It was like the Mashable House and BuzzFeed and all this stuff. So it was like- There was a lot of money going in. It was definitely the era of 0% uh, interest. Like yeah. some great parties. Unlimited VC capital. Yeah. So, but now the tech industry is just trying to consume every other in industry by yeah. developing and things deploying are, AI. Yeah, things are tense. Yeah, the, so as you're all aware, the current obsession is artificial intelligence, which is quite literally threatening the other two main parts of the entire festival. It's an odd pairing, but it was made much, much worse by the fact that South by Southwest chose to run what amounts to AI propaganda immediately before the screening of a film. And it'd be funny if it weren't so sad because the trailer that they play essentially tells the crowd of filmmakers and fans to either embrace AI or get the fuck out. It's, it's so tactless. It's <laughs> insane that this made it all the way to the actual screenings and no one stopped and said, hey. Do you think this could be not even misinterpreted, but we're doing something bad here. Do you for think what this maybe the entire screening audience will loudly boo this <laughs> ad the entire time it's playing? No, we're going to run with it. Mm. So it is totally and absolutely tone deaf to the point that it is fascinating. Fascinating that anyone in charge would not have anticipated this reaction. And it makes the festival look incredibly stupid as a result. And this also adds to the list of ways that South by Southwest has fumbled completely this year, which we'll get to in a second. But first, here's uh, the sizzle reel that included the AI promotion getting justifiably booed by the audience as it plays before a film screening. And I think if you look out into this room, you can tell that AI is a culture. Artificial intelligence is the present. It's here. Everything is here. Show me an AI 
thinker. You know your business is going to be disrupted, and you need to stop resisting and start learning to resist the process. That is actually a good thing. Find those leverage AI and accelerate faster. Be one of those people that leverages AI. Don't be one of those you're worried about digital transformation. This digital divide is opening, and there's a completely different approach that could be very human. I actually believe that AI fundamentally makes us more human. Our society is going to look very different. Movies are back. Yeah. <laughs> As for the other problems plaguing this year's festival, uh, a ton of bands have been pulling out of their official showcases at the last minute because of the festival's ties to the U.S. military and its contractors. Surely this festival can't operate without the funding of the U.S. Army and Raytheon, yeah, right? Yeah, that's another thing where, like, you know, a lot of, like, tech events have, like, a DARPA sponsorship or something like that. Like, the U.S. defense I industry connection to tech at least makes sense. Uh, on a, a, you know, synergistic level. Yeah. It makes no fucking sense at all for the U.S. military to sponsor a music festival. It or is, a film festival. Yeah. It's just, it's odd that South by Southwest in particular was like, sure. Yeah. Um, so, they should probably just get rid of the tech part of this festival. So, yeah, the, the military sponsorship, that would be bad enough on its own in any normal year, but we are also currently... Um, funding and providing munitions to what is clearly a genocide of the Palestinian people at the hands of the Israeli government. So, yeah, tensions are high. Yeah. People are extra not having that shit. Mm -hmm. So the first hint that we saw of this was from the band Scowl, who announced that they were backing out of South by Southwest on their Instagram, which appears to have led to the Flat Spot record label canceling the entire show and moving it to a local venue with no connections to the festival. The band said the following on social media, a statement that would be echoed by many, many other bands in the following days. Scowl is no longer performing at any of our previously scheduled official South by Southwest showcases. We came to this decision in protest of the U.S. Army's sponsorship of South by Southwest, as well as the involvement of RTX, formerly Raytheon, and has no connections to Wait, the now defunct Rooster Teeth did Expo. Did Raytheon change its name? Yeah, to RTX, the Rooster what? Teeth Expo. Oh my god. Uh, also, Collins Aerospace and BAE Systems, Bay Systems, <laughs> whom have direct ties to the manufacturing and supplying of weapons used against Palestinians. We refuse to be complicit in the face of genocide in Palestine. We refuse to participate in the war machine. We will still be performing at our scheduled unofficial showcases. I mean, that is the great thing is out South by, South by Southwest. It's like, oh no, I'm not doing my official South by Southwest showcase. Everyone's already in I the guess city. it's too bad that I, there aren't... Uh, just hundreds of other music video venues in the, the city that would yeah. be glad to have me. But yeah, obviously this extends far beyond the bands on Flat Spot, and the ripple effects have made their ways to mainstream outlets, as well as to the desk of the Texas governor, Greg Abbott. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the hill with more. Controversy surrounding the annual South by Southwest Festival has spiked after more than 100 acts, the majority of them European, dropped out over the U.S. Army's and defense contractors' sponsorship of the music and cultural event in Austin, Texas. As of Wednesday, five music labels and 105 bands and individual musicians, including more than 60 acts from the United Kingdom and all 12 Irish bands originally slated per to perform, Hell yeah. chose to forego the nine-day festival in protest of the Pentagon's support for Israel's war in Gaza. The boycotts quickly drew the attention of Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who wrote, Bye, don't come back, in a post on social media. Austin remains the HQ for the Army Futures Command. San Antonio is Military City USA. We are proud of the U.S. military in Texas. If you don't like it, don't come here. The official South by Southwest <laughs> account quickly responded that it does not agree <laughs> with Governor Abbott. So this was weird because they they immediately responded like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is, first of all, this is terrible for business. Yeah, no. Second I've... of all, this is terrible for the literally the acts that make this entire festival possible. Right, this is a, a pretty big annual event that probably generates a fuck ton of money for uh, Austin and Texas as a state, and uh, I'm sure at South by Southwest, they are realizing that they really stepped in it here. Yeah. And are reevaluating, and uh, and then big old 
Greg Abbott wheels in. in. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's right. Fuck you. Stay the fuck out of Texas. And South by Southwest. I don't want like, any bands to ever play in Texas. I don't think we asked you a damn thing. <laughs> yeah. But then they were wishy-washy on the rest of it. Uh, organizers for the festival wrote that they fully respect the decision these artists made to exercise their right to free speech while defending the Army's sponsorship role in the festival. The defense industry has historically been a proving ground for many of the systems we rely on today, they wrote. These institutions are often leaders in emerging technologies, and we believe it's better to understand how their approach will impact our lives. The Army's sponsorship is part of our commitment to bring forward ideas that shape our world. In regard to Collins Aerospace, they participated this year as a sponsor of two South by Southwest pitch categories, giving entrepreneurs visibility and funding for a potentially game-changing work. The Israel-Hamas conflict was also acknowledged, though organizers did not take sides. And again, to your point, it makes in sense the tech, for tech. In the tech yeah. space, that they get rid of the tech part of South by Southwest. Yeah, this it's just the source of all these problems, and also like. It's actively combated to and against it's the, the worst part yeah. of the festival. No one fucking cares about that shit. That's just for fucking lanyards to go up and like give each other business cards. Yeah. And then take their own business card back and then give their business card back to the other guy and just this ritual that they do down on Sixth Street and then puke. Yes. And um, yeah, no, no one like you average your average person, you ask them what is South by Southwest? They'd be like, Oh, it's a music music festival. And a music festival. Yeah. Or maybe they say it's a film festival. Nobody would say it's a tech conference. It's get, not known for that. I did get to meet Grumpy Cat, though, and that was, you know, obviously a highlight. R.I.P. Um, yeah, I I feel like if South By wants to retain whatever's left of, like, its core cultural impact, that just, like, just get rid of the tech stuff. But the problem is the tech stuff is probably what finances the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, and the problem is Austin as a city has gotten measurably worse in the decades since South By Southwest started, and has very noticeably shifted from a community of musicians and artists and filmmakers to a community of rich dickheads who have like started Elon money. Musk. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. uh, every time I go to Austin, I'm like, it sucks more than the last time. It's very upsetting because I it used to be a great fucking place. I, it's, yeah. Yeah. It still is, but like it still it, is, but it's just like every a lot you, of the charm is you gone. can tell. It's and this is true of a lot of like a lot of like sort of mid-level American cities in terms of population that were known for their unique like arts community and were known for being weird have been kind of just made worse gradually by tech companies coming in and driving up the rent and basically making it much harder to actually incubate artistic talent. Yeah, well, it's because tech bros with tons of money want to buy coolness. Yeah. Because they... But they don't have it naturally. All they can do is kill cool. <laughs> yes. But speaking of Texas, it just got a hell of a lot harder to reach transcendence through masturbation. Thanks to the fact that Pornhub has now blocked the state of Texas from accessing its network of sites, adding yet another Republican part of the country to its growing list of banned states. And it feels like we should probably go over the reasoning for this again, because at face value and the way that it is reported on in the mainstream media, it seems reasonable that a state would want age verification to access a porn site, which, by the way, has been the standard for decades now anyway. It's just that this is a bit of an overreach. What's actually happening is an incredible invasion of privacy that could and probably would lead to data harvesting blackmail as well as very easy identity. Theft. Yeah, like no on 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 paper it's like yeah, that's a perfectly reasonable idea. It's like wait, who's going to be handling this? Yeah. Who's going to be storing this data? Also mm. just the idea of uploading your government issue ID to any yeah. website. Like your fuck the, the credit bureaus can't even keep their data safe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want I don't want my name on your fucking Coomer list. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so basically, you'd have to upload your government issue ID in order to access certain websites. Which, yeah, nothing better than giving your personal information to a state's internet portal. You know, those sites that have an already abysmal track record when it comes to data protections and safety. Yeah, anytime, even here in Los Angeles, anytime I, I go on a local government website, I feel like I am transported back in time to like two thousand three. Yep. And that's probably the last time these sites were updated. Yep. Here's The Verge with more. Pornhub has disabled its site in Texas in response to the state's online age verification law. The site now displays a message to users in the state that says having to provide an ID when accessing an adult website is not an effective solution for protecting users online. 
Last year, Texas enacted a previously blocked age verification law, HB 1181, that requires users to upload photos of their government IDs or use another third-party verification service before accessing a pornographic website. The law also requires porn sites to display health warnings that claim porn impairs human brain development, among other unproven issues. Texas sued Pornhub's parent company, ALO, in February, alleging that Pornhub failed to comply with the new law. As you may know, your elected officials in Texas are requiring us to verify your age before allowing you to access our website, Pornhub says in a notice to users. Not only does this impinge on the rights of adults to access protected speech, it fails strict scrutiny by employing the least effective and yet also the most restrictive means of accomplishing Texas's stated purpose of allegedly protecting minors. Pornhub argues that on-device age verification is the only effective solution for protecting minors and adults alike. This method could involve using facial recognition or another method to verify a user's age locally on their device. So there you go, Texas. Enjoy all that freedom you ordered. Yep. Here's that freedom. So, so much for all that small government. You can't even jack off or go to a music festival without the state getting involved anymore. Sounds like socialism. Yeah, very strange. Anyway, speaking of government potentially ruining things by having no idea what they are doing, as we mentioned in our most recent video, the TikTok ban was approved in the House and will move to the Senate for a vote. But essentially, it's all but assured that the government will force a sale of the social media platform or shut it down entirely. Shut it down! This is, of course, in spite of the fact that no one has provided any actual proof that the Chinese government is using the app to spy on citizens, influence their behavior, disrupt local politics, or that they have access to any of the data at all. Once again, we are not defending the Chinese government. We're actually just annoyed that our government isn't enacting industry-wide regulations that could protect U.S. citizens' data across the board. They are instead focusing on one company in particular, to the benefit of the other homegrown American company. Yes, how convenient. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe, a winner. Anyways, if, you're thought, if you thought your data was in bad hands before, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because alongside former Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick throwing his hat in the ring to take over TikTok, the app just got targeted by another potential investor. Trump administration official Steven Mnuchin. All the stars are here. Ugh, yeah, I hadn't thought about this guy for years. Also, ties to Warner Brothers, the producer of uh, uh, Dawn of Justice, uh, yeah. Steven Mnuchin. Steve, yeah. The producer of the original Suicide Squad, Steven Mnuchin. This guy, uh, his entire thing with the Trump administration was like just blatant like self-enrichment, right? Yes. That's what I recall. It's yes. been a while. Yes. But yeah, Steve Mnuchin was Treasury Secretary under former President Trump, and he is now all of a sudden very interested in acquiring the world's most popular social video platform. If he were to acquire it, that would mean that two of the biggest social platforms on the planet would belong entirely to hard right conservatives. And that's almost certainly a terrible, terrible idea. Yeah, and that's not mentioning all of the actual blatantly right wing social media platforms, including the uh, Facebook, essentially run by a libertarian. But uh uh, really quickly, I want to go back to the Texas thing because that just reminded me that, like, how does this not present a hurdle for Elon Musk's X platform in Texas when X hosts nothing but porn bots and port videos on it? That is a good point. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe Greg Abbott can do something good for once and finally shut Wheel down. Wheel himself off a cliff? Shut down. <laughs> Shut down these pussy and biobots. Yeah. That would be, uh, you know, you'd, you'd almost have to hand it to him. Okay, back to TikTok. But, but not leg it to him, because his legs don't work. <laughs> back, back to TikTok. Here is CNBC with more. Former Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin is building an investor group to acquire ByteDance's TikTok as a bipartisan piece of legislation winding its way through Congress threatens its continued existence in the U.S. I think the legislation should pass, and I think it should be sold, Mnuchin, who leads Liberty Strategic Capital, told CNBC's Squawk Box on Thursday. It's a great business, and I'm going to put together a group to buy TikTok. Mnuchin did not specify who the other investors would be in such a deal or the potential valuation of the social media site. Anyways, um, very suspicious that a former Trump administration official is very interested in buying this app. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to 
a guy who is clearly way off the deep end uh, down the right wing rabbit hole owning Twitter.com. Yeah. Currently I, known as X. So, yeah, initially, before my theory was that Trump would ironically uh, get the, stop this from happening the way he stopped the border bill from happening, yeah. purely because he doesn't want Joe Biden to get credit for something he wanted to do himself. Mm -hmm. And so the, there would be enough Senate Republicans uh, voting no to stop this from proceeding. Um, but yeah, now, I mean, there is that third option of um, they just conspire to get Complete control of it? Republicans to uh, take over TikTok and just turn it into truth social, but with video. Yeah. We'll see, I guess. Uh, all right, finally today, where in the world is Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton? Where in the world is Kate. Princess Kate Middleton? Uh, you left your comments on our video earlier this week, and despite more conspiracies continuing to grow out of this totally bizarre news cycle, we are going to focus entirely on what our community really thinks is really going on. I think that Barandalet of Chamondale is up to something. Uh, so here's one of the rumors. Okay, first of all, it is actually nuts that like major U.S. outlets are talking about this in such an open way, which leads me to believe that something horrific is actually going on. Mm. But the big rumor that I saw, again, I have no fucking idea, but the big rumor that I saw is the... Uh, the Marchioness. Marchioness Apparently it's called Chumley. Chumley. That's how you pronounce it, which is... That's... No. That's the port, British the Palm Bre Stars guy. Britain, you gotta stop it. Yeah. Words are spelled a certain way, mm -hmm. and if you want them to be pronounced a, a different way, you gotta change how they're spelled. The Timothy of Chalamet, that lady, <laughs> uh, apparently her relationship with her husband is like all for show and so that they could breed more royals, and he allegedly is like uh, just gay and has a boyfriend in France, and is like they're just living separately. And which have an is, open which is, uh, that is itself, that's um, really keeping the royal spirit alive. Yeah. Like, that's more royal than anything the rest of these fuckers are doing. One of the, the theories that I saw online was like, oh, it's actually fine that Prince William cheated on Kate with this woman because she's in an open marriage. Because no one cares what Kate thinks. The, ro uh, the royal family's already uh, positioning her as evil. Yeah. yeah she, he, she's the reason he's bald. Yeah. The, remember, you remember that great head of hair he had before he met Kate Middleton? Yeah. Tisk tisk. Yeah. Uh, yes, there are many British tabloids. Tut, tut. That are already doing the heavy lifting of trying to villainize Kate Middleton. I mean, this is like the last chance they got. Yeah. No one's gonna care about this shit in 50 years. Like, they, this is, it's, it, this, it's sunset on the British Empire, for real this time. Yeah, I mean, it really is. The whole industry built around fucking caring about the royals. They gotta make that money while they can. This is the one good thing that has happened during our generation. The downfall of the royal family. Everything else kind of sucks. Or it started cool and then it sucked, like Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> the winner for the most likely theory as to what the hell is going on with Kate Middleton goes to user Kathy Klism, which first of all, a great name. Good name, yeah. Who wrote that Kate, the Boeing guy, and Epstein were all taken out by the same assassin. That assassin's name is George Anthony DeVolger Santos. It all connects. Get the yarn. Everything is connected in this world, and you are a fool to think otherwise. But yeah, something, things don't just happen. Something weirds happen. That's for sure. It is bizarre. There was a, a bunch of outlets came out and said, "We're just, we're no longer taking any photos or news directly from the royal family." They at can't this point. be trusted. And they said that's the first time that they've done this since, uh, like, the only other place that's banned is uh, Iran and North Korea. The House of Windsor is not to be trusted any further. They have proven themselves to be unreliable. I can't remember if it was the AP or AFP, but they're basically like, we have to kill notice like one or two stories a year. And almost always they're from North Korea. And North Korea is better at Photoshop than clearly these royals. The House of Windsor, terrible at Photoshop. Well, they're British. They're not going to be perfect at everything. Anyways, that's the end of the video. We have plenty more coming up for you on Weekly Weird News this week, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, make sure you click the like button. Do it. Come on. There you go. Click the like button. Uh, and also, make sure you're subscribed. Do all that stuff. Leave a comment. Reply to a comment. Go nuts with more conspiracy theories. Who cares at this point? Apparently, even the mainstream media is eating this up, so say whatever you want. Yeah. If you want more news in the meantime, please watch our the, the actual episode about 
the princess. And also, Tech News Day about NFT Nick, who is loving all this attention that he ordered. Yep. We gave it to him. Yep. See you soon. Bye.